So I'm going to talk about hardening off a little bit and what that really means. I've mentioned it in a few posts. So you've started your seedlings in the house, really nice controlled environment, really warm, constant kind of temperature, average is about 20 degrees in most houses, um, no wind, no pests, very few diseases, so your seedlings are pretty safe there. So then you need to consider, well if you're going to plant them outside ultimately, how are you going to make that transition? So hardening off is really just what they call toughening up your plants, managing that transition from warm safe environment to going out into the big bad world where all sorts of things can happen to your plants and it's just about giving them the best chance they can of survival. So how do I go about it? Well often I start things off in the house, um, I kind of move into the greenhouse once uh, seedlings have kind of come on a wee bit. So you can see in here Night time I've got my tomatoes at the moment, I've potted them on, they're looking quite healthy. Got a wee tray of early dwarf peas that I sown here, two per module, they're quite happy in here. So at night time in here it's still quite quite mild um, considering our, our climate. One thing a lot of growers have is a maximum and minimum thermometer, so you can tell how hot it gets during the day and how cold it got during the night. I can see last night it didn't get below about 13 degrees in here and during the day it's been up as high as about 33 degrees C. So pretty hot during the day and it's not too cold at night. So plants like tomatoes here, they'll cope with that kind of overnight low temperature, not too savage. They're quite happy. Now if it did look like it was going to really dip temperature wise, I would probably look at covering Maybe my tomatoes with a bit of fleece. Um, peas would be absolutely fine. They're pretty tough and cold hardy. Some brassicas over here, cold rabies. Um, they're quite wee seedlings at the moment, not long germinated. So if it was going to get really cold, I might just put a little lid over them for the night and take it off again during the day. Same for some of these seedlings. I mean, some of these are lettuces. They're pretty cold tolerant, so they, they're not going to be troubled by bit of overnight low, neither of these onions. Um, we've got some turnips and spinach there, they'd be fine as well. And some more tomatoes. Um, so the, it's just about different strategies. Another thing that some people use in their greenhouses is a greenhouse heater. So typically, like my mum always had a paraffin heater. That was one of my jobs as a, a young lad, was to fill the paraffin heater and to make sure it was lit at night. And that, again just raises the ambient temperature in your greenhouse by a number of degrees. Some folk will line the inside of their greenhouse with bubble wrap. That acts as a layer of insulation, that raises the uh, temperature as well. Creates a nice warm environment for growing. Um, another key feature of greenhouses is an automated ventilation window. Very important when your temperature's in here, even at this time of year, or into the, the 30s. It's a little sort of oil hydraulic sort of fluid kind of mechanism going on. So as the oil heats up in this little uh, pump, it, it pushes the window open. So you can control what temperature you want that to open to by adjusting the knob on the thing there. This one's actually broken. Uh, my new one replacement just arrived yesterday, so I need to rig that up. Otherwise my plants are gonna fry. You can also just open the door. You might want to do both on a really hot day, door and vent, to, um, vent. also lets insects in that uh, can help with pollination, that sort of thing. So what if you don't have a greenhouse? Well, a lot of folk use different systems, you'll have heard uh, or seen mention of cold frames. So a cold frame is like a mini greenhouse, uh, typically just as I've started to film, it started to rain, but we'll go out, have a quick look at something that approximates a cold frame in my garden. It's not a classic cold frame, but it's uh, my kind of take on it with some materials that I had kicking around, but it fulfills more or less the same function. Okay, so here's my cold frame. So this is just a wooden box that I constructed sitting on top of quite a, a deep planter. Basically it just makes use of a couple of old IKEA glass wardrobe doors. So if I go in there, you can see Side. We've got 
got some plants in there. So this just gives me a bit of control. Doors allow me to raise it up on a few wee bits of brick, just a little bit of air in each day, a wee bit more. Or I can take them off if it's getting towards the end of the week of hardening off and give them as much sun or exposure as I want. They're quite sheltered in there. So not a bad option for a couple of old IKEA doors and a wee bit of wood. Does the job. And what if you don't have a cold frame? Uh, well that's fine. You don't need need one, you can still harden them off. Just take them outside, put them on a sunny doorstep during the day or sunny bit of your patio. Um, protect them with a bit of fleece if you've got it. Leave them out for an hour, take them back in. Repeat every day, just leave them a bit longer till eventually by the end of the week you leave them out overnight, maybe with a bit of fleece on them, maybe ultimately take the fleece away. Um, different plants will tolerate different temperatures better, like of lettuces, uh, peas, spinaches, these are quite cold tolerant sort of plants. Um, I mean you still don't want to go straight from a really warm environment to a, a very windy cold environment. It won't like that, but they are more forgiving, you know. Um, plants like tomatoes, peppers, runner beans, French beans, um, squashes, all of those at this point in time, very susceptible to any overnight cold or frost. Um, probably don't want to risk planting any of them outside until uh, probably mid-May, depending on what the weather is doing. Uh, we can still get a frost here at this time of year, right up to mid-May in Edinburgh. So. If you do plant of those out, you take a chance. Some years you get away with it, the weather's amazing. Um, you get a bit of a head start. Other years, you put a whole lot out, you go back two days later and they're all dead. Or eaten by slugs, depending on what the weather's doing. So you have to keep an eye on the weather. There's an element of judgement involved. Look at what the forecast is for the next 10 days, if it's going to be. Um, like last, the last year in May, we had an unseasonal storm, really strong winds. Um, for about two or three days, really heavy rain, and I had just managed to plant all my squashes out at what should have been the right time of the year, and within that three days I lost a whole bed of them. Uh, one bed survived, one didn't. Um, that's just the way it goes, you know, element of luck sometimes, but the more you keep your eye on the weather, you can judge when when's there's maybe a, a good window to plant your stuff out. Yeah, you don't want to be planting out straight into a storm. Uh, that was a bit daft of me really, but there you go, these things happen. So what is the process of hardening off? How do you do it? Well, it's about doing a little bit each day, so typically it can take up maybe a week to harden off plants properly before you plant them straight out. If you take a seedling straight from your house or your greenhouse and plant it straight out in the garden, it's going to get a shock. Okay. It's not going to be used to getting hit by winds. Winds will dry them out very quickly and if that happens, the uh, leaves will shrivel up, um, affect its ability um, to photosynthesize and transpire, and the plant will quite possibly even die. Um, if they're not strong enough yet, so they've not, not been used to wind, the plants will react and strengthen in relation to these things. Indeed, some growers, I think in Japan, use feather dusters to brush over their seedlings while they're in their trays to simulate the action of wind. Other folk just blow on them. And that, stimulates the plant to strengthen. Um, so it's about preparing your plants. So a lot of the focus is they'll take them out, put them in a cold frame, so they'll, um, like my cold frame there, prop open the door a wee bit more each day. Maybe on the first day of the week, or maybe give it an hour outside like that. Um, close the lid down. Second day, they might give it a couple of hours. Third day, maybe half a day. Fourth, fifth day, going, going almost a full day. By the end of the week, probably be leaving the cold frame lids open overnight so that they can actually spend the night outside fully used to and adjusted at that point and at that point you're probably okay to plant them out into your veggie patch um, exposed to the elements you can soften that below by planting them out and covering them with fleece shortening the harding off period um, I think it's still a good idea to give them a few days of that kind of treatment before you uh, plant out and even protect with fleece but the fleece will give them an extra bit of overnight protection in terms of keeping the temperature four degrees or so higher than the, the outside temperature. Also keeps pests and birds off them, um, things from digging around them. These uh, things can all affect how well your seedlings do once they get out there. 